You are watching KUTV Primetime News with Mutegi K. Martin. All right. Welcome back. You're watching KUTV Primetime News and we are back with a very interesting discussion. On Wednesday, March 24, this year, story hit the headlines. Interior Cabinet Dr. Fred Matiangi issued the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees with a 14-day ultimatum to have a plan to close down the Dab and Kakuma refugee camps, citing national security concerns. This issuance was given with no room for negotiations. However, the UNHCR office in Nairobi needed this very denied room for nego negotiations, rather, urging the Kenyan government to keep protecting the refugees as they keep engaging in dialogue. Both the Dab and Kakuma host close to half a million refugees, majorly from Somalia, others are from Sudan, South Sudan, Ethiopia, DRC, and Burundi. This issuance comes at a time when Kenya's relationship with Somalia is struggling with the issue of maritime boundary in between the countries. Now, be reminded that this is not the first time that Kenya had made up its mind to close down these particular camps. The country had made two attempts to do so after the Garissa University and Dusit D2 attacks. Dr. Machiangi's predecessor, Joseph Ole Kayseri, had also tried to push for the closure of these camps, citing more threats which stretch to environmental degradation and economic instability. This tense situation has elicited mixed reactions and feelings among Kenya citizens. Some want the refugees to be taken back to their countries. Others want them to remain in Kenya. Yesterday, the 8th of April, Peter Geshira, a lawyer and former presidential candidate, filed a legal challenge against the Dab and Kakuma closure ultimatum. After the court proceedings, there was a ruling in the court that blocked temporarily though the closure of these two camps. The story continues. Now to put this into perspective, from both ends is Mijio Mwenda, security expert who is the CEO at Eye on Security. Karibu sana. Thank you very much. I'm honored to be here and it's greetings good. to all your viewers. <laughs> it's, a, it's an honor to have you here yes. with a massive experience in the security world. Maybe to shed a little more light on what we may need to know, some of the things that might not be very clear at this particular time. Now let's begin here. There has been a tension and uh, we don't want to assume that it's been easy for both sides, both the UNHCR and the Kenyan government, and, and mostly for the Kenyan government. And uh, maybe I want to, I want you to, uh, to paint the picture on how big or small the crisis might be where a country offering international protection to uh, people, from, people who are refugees now uh, and how it directly affects the security of the, the, the local country, the domestic security of its own people. How big is that crisis and what, what might we be facing as a, as a country? Um, luckily for us, mm -hmm. it is not uh, catastrophic as it might be painted. Mm -hmm. Because even though these refugee camps have been accused of harboring terrorists before, or terrorist cells, sleeper cells in those refugee camps, mm -hmm. it's not the whole 500,000 refugees who are terrorists or who, who, who are uh, sympathizers of terrorism. Definitely. It's just a few pockets of them, a few, you know, one or two of them. Mm -hmm. Truly can be that massive. However, the damage, the damage carried out by 10, 20 refugees who have become delinquent and they have joined terrorism is as massive, is as painful to the country. And so in terms of looking at the astronomical effect of this, it is that it's not all the refugees. Mm -hmm. In fact, more than 98% of them are amused mm -hmm. that they are about to go home mm -hmm. because of things that they don't know about. Mm -hmm. Many are sincere refugees. They are there out of desperation. They need food. They need water. Mm -hmm. They need raiment on their body. They need a roof over their head. They need security. They need education for their children. They are amused that someone is really discussing about taking them back mm -hmm. because some few bad uh, bad ones in their midst went and planted IEDs on the road. Yeah. And maybe um, the, the, the picture you're painting to me right now is how um, we, are, we are focusing on the huge number of people who are actually running away from danger and painting them as dangerous people. Now let me even make it worse for uh, you. Uh -huh. Let me traumatize you tonight. All right. Now take all those people, mm -hmm. 500,000. Yeah. Say half are in uh, in Kakuma and half in uh, the dab. Mm -hmm. Just hypothetically, yeah. not quite half half. All right. But let's just say, it. then get all of them mm -hmm. within fourteen days mm -hmm. to head back to their countries. Yeah. 
a report I read online said almost uh, more than half of those are from Somalia. Mm-hmm. Now, put all those people in buses and trucks and whatever you can, and boom, dump them at the border. Mm-hmm. Do you even see how many people those are going to be? And when they came to Kenya, they didn't come in that large number yes, on definite, one day. Definite. They trickled in slowly over mm-hmm. a period of time. Mm-hmm. I'm sure a few even came as early as this year, mm-hmm. you know, finding the situation untenable in their country. So yeah. they didn't come en masse. Mm-hmm. Now you return them en masse. Man, it's, it's, <laughs> it's the crazy. picture is scary. Yeah. It's scary. Wow. That, that, that puts another picture in my mind where, I mean, uh, specifically for, for these two camps, which were, one of them is actually now uh, three decades old, the other, one is tw- the other one is 29 years old. I mean, this is enough time for a young man to have walked into Kenya, and now by the time they're coming back, they even have grandchildren. Actually, there are some people who walked in there uh-huh. as, you know, young men, uh-huh. and they have gone back not only with their own wives uh-huh. and children, uh-huh. but the their children have had children, like yeah. you said, grandchildren. <laughs> uh-huh. 29 years is a long time. Yeah. All they know is home. And, uh-huh. and, and this, this quickly brings me, maybe this is a question you have ahead, and maybe mm. I can answer it quite in advance. All right. Why can't we assimilate these people into our society? Okay. You think so? We should have assimilated them. It's, it's given in the Geneva Conventions. Mm-hmm. A country, mm-hmm. our legislature, mm-hmm. our M- members of parliament, the senators, can decide to pass a law mm-hmm. that grants a, a citizenship, naturalization yeah. mm-hmm. of all those citizens into Kenya. Because again, truly, how do you keep half a million people in a, in a camp? Mm-hmm. I, I'm avoiding to use the word concentration camp. Yeah. When this, these are some of the most industrious, most resourceful people in the continent of Africa. Mm-hmm. Let's just zero into the Somali community. Who doesn't know a Somali? In your wood, bro. <laughs> I come from Meru. You yeah. come from the Rakanidi. Yeah. The, you see them selling shoes uh-huh. In Meru town, there's a there's a there's a, a shopping mall called Garisa. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. Who doesn't know these are very industrious people? Very industrious. If, if we needed to have assimilated them into our society, uh-huh. given them citizenship into uh-huh. our country, uh-huh. and allow them to roam freely in this country yeah. as Kenyan citizens. And that is one way, by the way, of, of, of increasing our own population. Mm-hmm. And once they are members of our community, once they are citizens of our country, they have all the rights of this country. They can vote. They can. One of the reasons why this has never been discussed, mm-hmm. I asked the other day, mm-hmm. a legislator told me, if we make them Kenyan citizens in the dub, they will vote one of their own into parliament. Mm-hmm. Our uncouth. How do you fear that? Why, Even if they is, vote one of their own that? to rep- what is wrong with that? Yeah. But now that's why the local legislator mm-hmm. will never move that motion in parliament because he knows if these people become uh, uh, Kenyan citizens, mm-hmm. they could elect an MP just by their numbers to Definitely. parliament. Uh-huh. That is one of the most retrogressive and backward thinking I've ever seen. Mm. If I was Kenyan president today, brother, mm-hmm. I would move an agenda yeah. among my legislators mm-hmm. to assimilate all those people into Kenyan citizenship. Wow. Uh, Tanz- uh, uh, Tanzania did it the other day. Mm-hmm. They, they took all the, all the Burundi refugees that had crossed into s- Tanzania, Tanzania, gave them citizenship. Mm-hmm. President Kenyatta did that the other day with the Makonde mm-hmm. from, from uh, Mozambique. Yes. They have been in this country for, for so, so long. long. Yeah. Uh, I think also it's President Kenyatta who did that with the Nubians. Yeah. The Nubians were fighters who had joined the British army and they were given parts of Kibra to leave, mm-hmm. Kibra, Nairobi. Yeah. President Kenyatta assimilated them into a community. Mm-hmm. President Kenyatta did that with the Asian community there. They declared all of them Kenyan citizenship. Mm-hmm. I mean, Kenyan the citizens. citizens yeah. He needs to declare these Somali refugees, these Ethiopian refugees, up to the day the president declares, he could say, you see the way he gives orders these days yeah. because of the COVID <laughs> manenos, uh-huh. he says, in the entire Republic of Kenya, mm-hmm. he could say, by midnight of tonight, anyone that is called a refugee in the entire Republic of Kenya mm-hmm. is given presidential decree or permission to become a citizen. Whoa. Register tomorrow. Why can't we do this? These are human beings. Mm-hmm. How do we even stand and say, Kenya near to th- our siwa, Kenya? My friend, you, you and your ancestors came from Boa, if I, if I remember <laughs> properly. You Meru people came from Boa. <laughs> How can you claim this? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> this conversation the, the is Masa getting is, really the interesting. The Masa came from heaven. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
<laughs> and here we are. We have bought lands. We have settled. Allow these refugees who came from Addis Ababa. Uh -huh. I don't know Boa, but I know Addis yeah. Ababa. Allow them to become Kenyan <laughs> citizens. What's wrong with you? <laughs> this conversation is getting very interesting view and I hope you're still watching. <laughs> if you have any questions, kindly send them to KUTV Kenya on Facebook. That's where you can find us. Make sure you talk to us. Join us in this particular interesting conversation. And, you know, light shedding is actually just here and we are getting to learn a lot. Now, uh, as we continue to think about how we can uh, uh, assimilate, we have seen uh, Kenyans having mixed reactions on this particular matter. Some of them are very harsh on these people, as you have put it. Uh, saying these people should be taken back to their country and all that. Uh, but here you are with a message of hope for these particular people. What, what, what next? When, when, they come, when, they come, uh, when they become citizens of this particular country, do they remain in camps or how do we assimilate them to make sure that they actually can stay? Because we, we have seen uh, the Kushite people want living in some places, some spaces. They're very familiar with the particular spaces. How can we make them, uh, you know, fill the entire country and, and kill this stigma in the very end. Thank you. If mm -hmm. we were to assimilate them into our society, mm -hmm. that comes with, the, with, all the, with all the rights of a citizen, mm -hmm. freedom of movement. Yes. You can move and settle anywhere you want. So they won't be confined to one zone. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if, if again, uh, using the Somali community again as an example, you know even the Kenyan Somalis, mm -hmm. how far they have, they have cross crossed this country. They are as far as Malaba, our, our minister for sports, mm -hmm. Sias Amina, is a Somali Kenyan from Busia. Mm -hmm. Her community is from Western Kenya. Yeah. You can't even say they are from Mandera. Mm -hmm. Okay, of course she has roots there, but, but their family is in, 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 uh, in, in Western, uh, in, in Western mm -hmm. Kenya. Yeah. Uh, look at uh, this guy called Echeza, mm -hmm. Rashid Echeza. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound like a, a <laughs> local, local lawyer name. Yeah. But he's from where? From Western Kenya. They are, these people, our brothers from Somalia or our Somali uh, uh, friends are, are everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Look at the United States now. Mm -hmm. Ilan Omar is causing havoc in the U.S. Congress. She's become a citizen mm -hmm. of the United States and a congresswoman mm -hmm. in the United States. Mm -hmm. As in, these are very industrious people. Once Definitely. we give them the right to move everywhere, mm -hmm. but, well, be as it may, mm -hmm. because that's hypothetical. Again, I don't think it's a debate that can even overshadow the current situation that we need them to go back. Mm -hmm. I think um, taking them back to Somalia, mm -hmm. to Eritrea, to Rwanda, to Burundi, mm -hmm. to, to South Sudan is not the solution right now. Mm -hmm. In fact, even in the middle of a pandemic, some of the questions you sent me early mm -hmm. in the day made mm -hmm. me think very deeply. Yeah. How do you even deport people, tell people to go back, repatriate them to their countries in the middle of a pandemic? Mm -hmm. You are taking them back to countries that have completely mismanaged the pandemic. Yeah. You take them to Somalia where mm -hmm. even data, co proper data on, on COVID deaths, mm -hmm. COVID uh, uh, situation, or application of the protocols is, is, is not even anything we can record. Yeah. It's not possible to know what they're doing about it. You so, take them to South Sudan, mm -hmm. where half of the country's healthcare system is dilapidated. It's, it's completely mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, on, 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 on its knees. Mm -hmm. This is not the time, and I'm sincerely sorry. I, I love our minister, uh, C.S. Matiangi. I yeah. work with him. Mm -hmm. We work in the same security sector. Mm -hmm. But this is not the time to make the decision. Mm -hmm. I know it's very painful, and I want Kenyans to know. I share in their pain. I mean, I, my, much of my consultancy is in terrorism and counterterrorism. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you the pain I feel every day that yeah. our, our brothers are, 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 are killed at Westgate, mm -hmm. our children are killed in Garissa University, mm -hmm. or someone blows a bus like they did last time yeah. or kills our soldiers in, in, in Somalia, it cuts deep in my heart. Mm -hmm. I was a military officer in this country. Mm -hmm. I love this country. I've, I, I made a vow to die for this country. I feel pain when this country goes through pain. Mm -hmm. But even though I feel pain, mm -hmm. it's not the right time to tell these refugees to go back to their country. What we would be are, the right time? We are a, we are a community. Mm -hmm. First of all, we should wait for this pandemic to go away. Yeah. Truly, if, we were to if you do ask anything me when, at all. it is after this pandemic is gone, mm -hmm. and by statistics and health uh, experts are saying this is going to be around 2024, 2025. Mm -hmm. That's when we should be thinking of closing these refugee camps. Mm -hmm. For now, we should be giving these people security. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. In fact, we need to protect those refugees, yeah. even from terrorists themselves. Mm. Because those terrorists have found sleeper cells in the refugee camps because maybe we have a failed security system that has not been able to penetrate into the refugee camps. And there's nothing that prohibits a country's uh, security infrastructure mm -hmm. to extend its tentacles into a refugee camp mm -hmm. and find out what is going on there. Even use some of those refugees as part of our informers and our spy machinery mm -hmm. to catch those ref those refugees who are delinquent and who want to become terrorists. Mm -hmm. It is our failure yeah. of imagination, failure of action, mm -hmm. failure of extending our security agency work into those refugee camps mm -hmm. that makes us cumulatively dub them as terrorists and want to deport them. If we put Zara and serious security measures in those camps, mm -hmm. we would protect those women, those children who first came here because they were scared by war and conflict. That needs a moment of silence. But let's move on to the, to the next question <laughs> for the sake of time. Now, um, Kenya and Somalia relations have been, you know, the, the relationship has not been good at all in the recent past. Could this be one of the catalysts that actually bring to uh, such as a situation that we're seeing right now? I will answer that question in two parts. Mm -hmm. the, the good part and the first part is mm -hmm. Kenyans and Somalis have never been enemies. And I'm talking about citizens. Mm -hmm. We've been friends for years, generations. Even during Shifter Wars, our friendship stayed. Mm -hmm. Because shifters were a pocket of people who felt that uh, Northern Frontier District needed to secede to join Somalia, mm -hmm. and they it needed to be one of the five stars of the Somali nation. Mm -hmm. but, but in spite of those Kenyan communities, citizens of Kenya are friends of Somali citizens. We work with them here. Mm -hmm. we, we know some of them are actually citizens of Somalia. Mm -hmm. And we are friends. We do business. We've never been antagonized. We've never antagonized us. I was in Mogadishu about two years ago. Mm -hmm when the immigration line of the Somali citizens was expired, the gentleman stood there and said, anyone with a Kenyan passport mm -hmm. follow the Somali citizens. Because now they are, they, are lock, they are citizens who are coming back home, their line was finished. I mean, there was no one in the line. He said, the other people who can join that line are Kenyans. Anybody mm -hmm. with a Kenyan passport mm -hmm. move to that line. And I felt like, you know, moving my shoulders <laughs> and say, hey man, I'm home. Because this is the thing, mm. Kenyans and Somalis are brothers. You cannot, you cannot cut that brotherhood. Mm -hmm. You cannot, you know, disconnect our friendship. However, mm -hmm. the second part is this. Yes. Their leaders, and I mean our and theirs, mm -hmm. Kenyan leaders and, and Somali leaders, have failed to, 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 uh, to take that friendship mm -hmm. from the normal citizenship kind of friendship into leadership friendship. Because if you look at the region, the Horn of Africa region and the Great Lakes region, in fact, our, the leaders of this region are almost friends. Mm -hmm. they, are like, they have like a cartel of friendship in the region. Mm -hmm. Look at Magufuli and Raila Odinga. Look at Kenyatta and Museveni. Look at, at uh, uh, President of South Sudan, uh, uh, the former president. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, father, the, the father president who didn't become president, mm -hmm. Garang, mm -hmm. and his friendship with Moi. Then bring Salva Kiir and, and keep Moi Kibaki mm -hmm. and later. It's, it's first them, they become friends. They make these deals on the table. They're like, bro, why are we even fighting? Mm -hmm. When there was trouble between Kenya and Tanzania, Raila Amolo Dinga put Uhuru Kenyatta in a chopper. They went to Magufuli's farm. Uhuru was given Tausi, mm -hmm. that beautiful bird. <laughs> and it was a kind of an apisa. Mm. And there was a deal made and said, look, let's not have tension at the border. There's, there's the, the Maasai is in Kenya, the same Maasai is in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. The world is crossing from Kenya are the same ones that comes to Serengeti. You, mm -hmm. you cannot say these are Tanzanian, Tanzanian wild beasts, yeah. uh, these are Kenyan yeah. wild beasts. Yeah. You see? Yeah. So, so, so the, our leaders, now between Kenya and Somalia, our leaders have refused to cal cultivate that friendship. Mm -hmm. And I'll be sincere with you, President Kenyatta has truly tried. Mm -hmm. He's even invited uh, President Farmajo to state house here just to try and strike a friendship like bro yes you are president of your country I'm president of my country but first we are friends mm -hmm. there are issues we don't even need to allow a diplomatic row mm -hmm. it's, it's about calling you and saying hey bro can we fix this really is this possible mm -hmm. can you call the speaker of the house and pass a legislation yeah. so so our leaders have failed to extend that same friendship that we and our brothers in Somalia have cultivated but um, my other question would be, might we have cultivated something else where 
and and I'm, and I'm glad I'm talking to someone who has been in the military. Uh, when when uh, and we have had reports from Somalia where they feel they have differences with Kenya because from time to time they see Kenyan military in their spaces, and an information has been passed to them that these people have come to take your space to attack you. How how do you deal with such misinformation? misinformation. I'll call it misinformation. Yes. How? Let me tell you something. Uh -huh. Citizens of Somalia are so grateful to Kenya mm -hmm. that finally they can find a place to call home because of us. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll give you a very remarkable experience I had if we have time. My father... You have maybe like two? Two oh, minutes. Two My minutes. father uh, uh, married a Somali mm -hmm. from Tanzania. Sorry? Two years. My stepmom right. was a Somali from Tanzania. Okay. And then fast forward 30 years later... Uh, the, my father has passed on, and my my mother's relatives come to Nairobi to look for someone to introduce them to our defense forces and to our president because they want to run for a political office in Kisimayo. Mm -hmm. They are brought to me. We try to make some deals, put them there, <laughs> and I realize these are my relatives through mm -hmm. my stepmom from Tanzania. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Immediately, as soon as we discover this deal, we ask ourselves. I asked them, so why do you people want to hate us in Kisimayo? Mm -hmm. We rescued Kisimayo from Al-Shabaab. He said, nobody talks about Kenya in a bad way. This is Al-Shabaab line. The line of hating Kenya is an Al-Shabaab line. Mm -hmm. And guess who else bought it? President Farmajo. He bought that line mm -hmm. that for me to be reelected, I have to demonize Kenyans and scare mm. Somalis and tell them your life is in danger mm -hmm. because Kenyans are occupying you. But I'll tell you, regular and normal Somalis mm -hmm. And average Somalis want Kenya, want the help of Kenya to run for office like those my uncles who came from Kisimayo mm -hmm. and wanted to be assisted to go and run for a position there. Mm -hmm. Th that's what they feel Kenya can do for them and Kenya has done for them. They are grateful that they have a space, a, a place to call country mm -hmm. and home because of what we've done. Mm -hmm. Our sons have died in El Ade and elsewhere, you know, our, uh, our military sons and daughters mm -hmm. have died in war to protect that country. There is no Somali that can forget that. And by the way, I'll finish with this. Mm -hmm. Muslims are very grateful people. Hardly will a Muslim treat you with disdain, mm -hmm. disrespect, and ingratitude if indeed you've helped them. And I'll tell you, those brothers in Somalia know the price we paid for them. They have never treated us with disrespect. Mm -hmm. This diplomatic problem we have is a Farmajo problem. And by the way, we need to help Farmajo be voted out so we can have peace in Somalia and friendship with our country. No. And keep the refugees here. Mm -hmm. Don't take them anywhere. Let's make them Kenyans. All right. That said, as we wind up, what do you make of the recent ruling yesterday that, um, you know, um, t uh, t you know, temporarily uh, put an order to, you know, put this at ease as we continue to have dialogue? You know, Matiangi is our brother. And now when I say our brother, I mean you and me, mm -hmm. Meru brother. Mm -hmm. You know, we are short-tempered, right? We, our we, brothers we, from we are said to be. <laughs> our brothers from KC also carry the same. Eh? Uh -huh. So I think he was very angry. Uh -huh. That 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 window that the, the court has ordered has given him time to cool down a bit uh -huh. and also cool temperatures and allow diplomacy and engagement to uh -huh. take place. Uh -huh. We don't have diplomatic engagement with Somalia, but this is not a Somalia problem. This is a diplomatic issue between Kenya and all the United Nations agencies like UNHCR that are concerned with uh, with, uh, with, uh, with 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 refugee, refugee affairs uh -huh. and other actors, uh -huh. even non-state actors and NGOs that are in this matter. This window allows us time to engage each other, time to talk to each other, uh -huh. time to handle these issues. It's even time to put a, a security plan for the refugee camps. Mm -hmm. Go recruit some of them into our national intelligence service. So now we can protect the refugee camps and protect the country. But truly, this is not time to take these people back home. Mm -hmm. At least not in the middle of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Well said. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, for the sake of time, we will not be able to, uh, okay, as you bro. see, some of, most I of the... I love when it's spontaneous. <laughs> I, it, it, it's fantastic that way. Yes. And I'm glad you express those, those issues with a lot of passion. And it tells, you know, from your, from your perspective. And, and someone in the gallery is saying, Usimame uh, wakuchagwe. Uko Somalia? Uh, whichever. But, me, but, me, the, but then you can pass. I think your hair, your hair looks me, like... Me me a, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs>
That's how we come to an end of our conversation. Thank you so much, Bijiwa Moenda, for joining us. We really appreciate it. It's an honor to have you in this particular set. Thank you so much. All right, and I'll take a short break right here on KTV Primetime News. When we come back, we look at more news. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>